down to a speakable level. Right then, what we've got here is, uh, out of the glare. as you can see, we have a square wave and what I was aiming for was something that would work uh, just using an ass stable, you see. So what we've got there, as you can see, is that's a one millisecond marker, microsecond, so a one microsecond marker, and as you can see, the rise time is... Perhaps if I just move it over a bit, there you can see that the rise time is well within that one microsecond. It completely swings from one uh, voltage, uh, from the low voltage to the high voltage, and you can see the voltage there is... 3.3 volts, which is we've got a power pack on 3 volts, so it's probably about right. Right, and obviously the fall time is actually shorter, so we've got a fall and rise time, which are actually good. And obviously, you can see um, that the waveform frequency is quite high. Uh, I don't know, what would it be? That's uh, one, one microsecond is a meg, but I'm thinking the signal's probably somewhere in the region of 100k. Uh, you know, 50 to 100k. So that, and that is generated by a two transistor A stable. Okay, we've modified it slightly. We've got 100 uh, nanosecond, uh, sorry, 100 nanofarad uh, capacitors with the uh, 1k resistors okay in there okay and then we've got 100 the reason why I've got it working on 3 volts is because I've got the 100 ohm runs and it's basically putting too much current through those 100 ohm resistors so and you can see all the LEDs are lit I've got 3 LEDs these two here are the side of the two sides of the AS table and then here we've got a second one which is a emitter follower so that's actually that circuit there and then what I've done is I've then put a voltage amplifier on here, okay, and I've got another transistor doing voltage amplification, so a bit like that, but where that is connected in there, okay. That's got a 1K resistor there, loading through an LED to that transistor, which is an emitter follower, and then this one, which is just a voltage amplifier, in other words, uh, just a collector follower as such, <laughs> um, but it's connected directly to the previous stage, okay, um, but we, we're okay because the, the voltage coming down here, I mean, I've probably put a 10k resistor, in fact I did put a 10k resistor in there and it worked fine, and then that's just using this stage here, that transistor's cold, we've got a, a 1k resistor there, and that's just going straight up to the supply, there's no LED, you put an LED in there, in actual fact you see greater swings, so not sure about that. And probably if I took that one out, in fact, let's just do it. If I uh, bridge across it, I've got my bridging co <laughs> bit of bridging wire here. So if I bridge across that one, just to snuff it so that it's... Oh, great. It's not working because I'm shorting my backside off. Okay, let's just pull that out. Okay, still running. And uh, let's just use a little wire bridge instead. That should go through to cut out the LED. There we go. So the LED is now off. So it's just what it's doing is just going against the 1K resistor there. And uh, you can see, although it's shifted slightly, uh, the result is still the same. The rise time. It's about three segments there, and this is covering about five, so we're, within, we're well within one microsecond. I'm not quite sure where the other one's gone. Uh, there it is. See? So, what we've got here is a circuit which can produce a good square wave with very short rise time and fall time, and we can use that to drive our, um, our test rig. So we don't need anything complicated. So I could probably make that up into a circuit uh, with something that alters the PWM ratio on that. But the rise and fall times are good. We shall see. What I was using was a pot, not this one. That's 100k. I've got another one here. We are this one here, which is a 220, so that I can swing it between the. Uh, so I can vary the two outputs between 
uh, to give it the uh, PWM. Yes. Anyway, so there it is. It's all good. I have to actually start this, which is a bit odd, by cross-connecting uh, one of shorting one of the transistors out to make it swing. But uh, yeah, it's working. And uh, as you can see, when you go up to higher frequencies, it's yeah, you've got a little bit of rise time there. If I can uh, bring the marker in. <coughs> you can see that the rise times are actually pretty short. One mark there basically is a microsecond. And if it does one mark, there you go, you can see it's doing one mark there. Yeah. So those are in that sort of range. There you go, you can see one mark there. One mark here is half a my 500 nanoseconds. So that's a good Now all we've got to do is modify it so we can have a PWM where it swings between the two and then that gives proportional output. So we don't need a complicated microcontroller. Uh, it should just work. Right. And with that I'll have to go on because I'm late. Walk past eight, 